So at the time of recording, the Sony ZV E10 Mark II is able to be pre-ordered and a lot of people have given their thoughts and opinions on this camera from the perspective of, you know, in comparison to the Sony ZV E10 Mark I, as well as the Alpha 6700 and FX30. And I think a lot of these camera channels that are covering this camera, even the ones that say there's no point or whatever to this camera and stuff like that. I've seen the videos from camera, I think Conspiracies is called or wherever, and as well as some other people out there who are complaining about some of these features that are missing from the Mark II, as well as what's the point of this? This is a lot of old, you know, tech or wherever that's been lying around and it just cramming into a camera just to make a camera so future squid here sorry for the weird cut but i don't think i explained a little bit too much on the fact of what these camera reviewers are saying about the sony zv e10 mark ii um it's the fact of they again they're approaching it from the point of view of being a content creator or being somebody who does corporate work and everything like that and who has access to better cameras that are better suited for the type of work that they're trying to hand fist this camera into and being like well since you can't use it for this scenario since you can't use it for that scenario then this camera is pointless or because this other camera that's been made for a different scenario does it that, that scenario better so that means that this camera you shouldn't pick up or whatever and they're not really looking at it from the objective of what this camera itself the sony zv e10 mark ii what it's made for it's not made for the kind of work that you would do with the sony alpha 61 the 700 or even the fx30 it's meant for somebody who's just you know like me like i said under a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube or somebody who's like i said doing some casual vlogs for a, like instagram or you know youtube or whatever it may be pretty much why the sony zv e10 was one of the best selling cameras were for entry-level content creation work that's what it's for the alpha 6700 it does do good for video work but it's primarily meant for those who are going to do do pictures and maybe some light videography or some work wherever around that type of stuff but it's mostly meant for you know pictures it just has some perks or wherever that makes it a little bit good for you know using for video work you know what i'm saying and you can use it in the realm of using it for videos and pictures you know what i'm saying and the fx30 is meant for working for corporations for taking on clients paid work and stuff like that doing commercials or stuff to go on people's websites and everything of course you can use the alpha 6700 and fx30 for you know youtube work or whatever you know what i'm saying it's going to be overkill for that kind of stuff but that doesn't mean that because those cameras can do those said types of works and what they're meant for just because the sony zv e10 or the mark two of the sony zv10 can't do what the 6700 and you know the fx30 or whatever their primary jobs just because the sony zv e10s can't do that doesn't mean the camera's worthless doesn't mean it doesn't need to exist just because it has you know the same sensor or wherever as the other two cameras then it should be on par with them and it and it should be able to do those types of jobs no that's that's not what it's meant for it's meant for somebody who's like me, who's trying to just be a content creator, who maybe is live streaming, who is, you know, making YouTube videos, the type of videos that I'm making or wherever, you know what I'm saying? That's covering certain topics. It's not meant to go out and, like I said, do client work. It's not meant to go out and shoot weddings and, and shoot like for uh, pictures for wildlife and, and everything like that. It's just for the average person, you know what I'm saying? It's like the person who doesn't need the, the, the top of the line Samsung Galaxy Ultras or the iPhones or whatever, whatever max version that is, that is. It's meant for the average person who maybe get like a $200, $300 cell phone and is just like, I'm gonna use a cell phone or wherever that does everything a cell phone needs and maybe, you know, take some decent pictures or whatever because it has a decent camera set. It's not the most amazing camera set, but it's enough for, you know, taking videos or photos or wherever that, you know, I might post, I might not just keep them as memories and stuff. That's what this camera is for. You know what I'm saying? It's for the bottom of the rung ladder people, wherever, 
who don't need all the fancy gimmicks and stuff like that, who don't need the overkill cameras, you know what I'm saying? And the Mark II of the Sony ZV-E10 is going to allow those people to take a little bit more of a step or wherever, like I said, with the Cineblog um, option or wherever, with the cropped in black bars and everything like that, and the, the little LUTs or wherever who wanna experiment and trying to get some fancier footage for their YouTube content or whatever video content they're making, and they don't wanna have to do all that editing and post, they might just have to slow some footage down, maybe speed it up a little bit or wherever and editing and then slap some music on it and it's good to go. Something that would take people hours to do because they would have to do all that in post. Since it's half the work, if not more, is already done in the camera, it's a little bit easier for them to edit. You know what I'm saying? They can just upload it into Wondershare for more, which a lot of people use for their editing program. A lot of people aren't gonna go into DaVinci Resolve or, or Adobe Premiere or whatever it is, After Effects, all that stuff, and add all the color correction and doing all that stuff. Most people ain't gonna do that. And if they wanted to do that, and maybe they want to get a little bit more experience and teach themselves how to do that, the camera has the extra uh, capability of putting what's into the camera and it still is an option even if they don't want to use the s-log stuff they can do it with you know hlg3 because when i first got the camera of the sony zv e10 and the sony zv1 i was shoot shooting just you know auto everything auto and then i started learning how to do hlg3 and stuff like that learning what a lud is and all that stuff this is that extra step you know what i'm saying of the mark ii and top of that having the capability of having the time lapse and not having to learn how to do a time lapse or whatever they can just watch a video on how to set it up in the menu system and just go and do whatever they want to do they don't have to be an expert or anything like that they don't have to do all the extra time and stuff and a lot of people are going to say well that takes away the realness and and learning and people should self-educate themselves and stuff i i get all that but again you're approaching it from a perspective where you already know all this information you already are using better equipment than what this camera is. You're not taking a look at it from the aspect of somebody who's wanting to get into the realm. You're just gatekeeping them by saying, hey, you shouldn't pick up that camera that does everything for you. It's too easy and stuff like that. You should go get a higher, more expensive camera and learn how to do all that stuff or wherever with these cameras or wherever when they have an easy mode button right there. That's who it's made for. You know what I'm saying? And I understand, like I said, I'm a big component of people educating themselves. I'm a big po a component of, you know, trying to take in much knowledge and stuff. But people are sometimes are on time constraints like I am. I'm not going to want to sit there and set up the camera for, you know, um, I would say shooting time lapse when I can just sit there and click a few buttons and the camera's going to do it already for me. I don't have to take the extra time in, in post and editing. You know what I'm saying? I, I have other stuff I need to do. I have a family. I have other stuff inside content creation I need to do as well. And I have personal time that I want to dedicate outside of doing just this stuff or wherever. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm, I'm doing it in order to get paid. You know what I mean? So it's like, why would I want to take up extra time? Time is precious. You know what I'm saying? And again, a lot of people do use stuff or wherever that makes it easier that's why people so many people on youtube and content creators sell their own luts and everything like that and and presets and all this stuff or wherever why do you think you have presets and luts and stuff already probably for your content creation because it makes things easier so again why are we downplaying people who want something that's going to be easier for them to do at a cheaper option or wherever and actually do the aspect of what they're trying to do and get done at a cheaper price than the Alpha 6700 or the FX30. You know what I'm saying? At most, anybody would have to do is probably get a lens, depending on what type of content creation they're doing. They can get a cheap lens under $300. There's two of them that I recommend. And then you can get the Ulanzi fan or wherever on the backside of the camera for the overheating issues and just go forth and make whatever content you want to make. What's, what's wrong with that? How are people glossing over this? It doesn't make any sense. Back to past squid. I use the Alpha 6100 for my webcams and stuff like that for streaming, a live streaming or wherever to kick. And um, I think it's a good camera as long as you have a decent lens. And I've covered a lens um, from Yongnu that's a 16 millimeter lens that you can find on Amazon at the lowest point of $230. And I purchased it for a little bit more than the asking price, but that's the lowest it's been. And the Yongnu also has a 11 millimeter lens that has been under $300 for a while now. 
and people have covered both of those lenses in comparison to the Sigma lens and the Sony 11 millimeter lens or whatever respectively. Right now I'm using the Sony ZV-E10 with the Sigma lens and as well as using, like I said, the newer ND filter or whatever with that glow mist on top of it. And it's been perfectly fine. And I also use the Sony uh, ZV-1 as my top down or wherever and my vloggish th style camera for when I go out and vlogs and everything. And I have a wide angle adapter on it to be able to, you know, do what I need to do as far as vlogging. But I also use it on a gimbal from Jiyun or wherever the Crane M3. And, you know, that camera setup or wherever is perfectly fine for me. And I understand people talk about the rolling shutter, not having IBIS in both of these cameras and stuff. And obviously the Sony ZV E10 Mark II doesn't have, you know, IBIS or wherever for the rolling shutter, but it's a little bit better with the kit lens, the new kit lens that came out. Um, I do agree with a lot of people on that new kit lens. I don't understand why a vlogging camera only has 16 millimeters. I do think if they were going to update the kit lens, it needed to be, you know, down to like a, a, I don't know, a 10 to 18 or like 11 to 20, something like that even if you wanted to keep that variable uh, f-stop or wherever it goes up and f-stop and comes down depending on the zoom range and everything I think that would have been perfectly fine but I don't really get it so I would caution people not to get the kit lens even though it's a better kit lens than the old ones um, but you could get like I said for the type of camera it is and what mainly people are going to use it for sitting on a tripod and barely hand holding it and even if they do they probably use a selfie stick to get you know a little bit more range you could just get the body of the camera and then like I said for under $300 get a 16 millimeter or 11 millimeter lens from Yongnu and you're going to be able to shoot you know youtube videos perfectly fine but for a prime lens 16 millimeter 11 millimeter or wherever whichever one you want to go with for under 300 dollars it's fantastic and i know people who you know go into cameras and they look at pixel peeping and you know cr uh, chromatic aberrations and all that stuff or wherever might say that this lens is not going to be the best or wherever it's going to have weird stuff at the edges and the corners and like all this stuff and it's like look somebody who like me is not going to care about that stuff you know what I'm saying? Somebody who is just shooting a YouTube video like this, sitting on a tripod, talking into the camera, even when they go out inside and vlog, put it on a tripod, talking to the camera, even if they handhold it or wherever on a selfie stick or something or a gimbal like the Xiaoyun M, uh, Crane M3 that I use for both the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10 Mark One people are not going to care. You know what I'm saying? They're going to get those equipment and stuff like that. They're going to put a camera cage on the on the camera. The Sony ZV line, in my personal opinion, other than maybe the Sony ZV E1, E the full frame version of this line or wherever, these cameras are not made for people who are going to be shooting documentaries or doing potentially working with clients and doing uh, company work and stuff like that. Yes, of course, you could use these cameras for it, but that's not what it's really made for. You know what I'm saying? It's not made for shooting a Netflix movie or something like that. It's not meant to be the FX30. It's not to meant to be the Alpha 6700, which a lot of people just keep saying, you know, why get this camera? Because it's a worse version of these two cameras. And it's like, that's not what it's meant to be. So what I think the Alpha 6700 has over the ZV-E10 Mark I and Mark II is the fact that it has the IBIS, which in my personal opinion is going to be really good for people who are going to put on, you know, zoom lenses or gonna be taking photography because with their hand holding it and not putting on a tripod or something like that and they're zooming in, they're not gonna really have to worry about the rolling shutter or wherever or pictures looking wonky because it's gonna have, you know, that in-body stabilization depending on what type of lens you're using. Um, you're gonna be able to take probably a little bit better photos than you would on any of the Sony ZV-E10s, as well as, you know, the Sony ZV line, um, probably other than the Sony ZV-E1, which is the full frame camera. And on top of that, it has the AI chip that, you know, crops in or wherever a little bit more on your photos or your video screen or wherever, and it's gonna be able to simulate following you around um, the screen or wherever when you're doing a video form of content. So it makes it look like you have a cameraman that's zooming in with the lens and all that stuff. And that's pretty cool. But like I said, with the Sony Alpha 6700, that's what the camera is meant to do. It's meant to do that kind of capability with the photos. And like I said, having that AI chip, it would have been nice in the Mark II of the Sony ZV E10, but not having that and still having the cine vlog or wherever uh, I would say option as well as having the option of time lapses or wherever yes you don't have that AI tracking but most people who are this is targeted towards is probably going to use something along the lines of uh, CapCut which is a somewhat 
paid for, I would say subscription based kind of like editing software that people would not normally nine times out of 10 use the AI tracking wherever for that kind of stuff for, you know, uploading to TikTok anyways. So the camera that this is geared towards those types of people probably already have that software so they can cut the cost of not putting that AI chip in because nine times out of 10, because of the whole vertical thing or wherever with the menu system and everything, when you turn it vertical and stuff, they already know the people who are gonna use that AI tracking or wherever in that software probably don't need the AI chip anyways. So that's a way for them to cut it down or wherever, and they can just do that in post in their editing software of choice. But you can also do this in DaVinci Resolve, which is kind of uh, more cumbersome to try to do that. But again, like you can still do it in editing software. So again, not putting that AI chip in starts to make sense. Again, when you look at the fact of this is made for the people who are using the camera to upload to TikTok, who might take advantage of that AI tracking. And like I said, putting it into CapCut, which already has the AI tracking for hand the body the face you can do all that stuff and you pay like eight dollars or something like that under think i think under ten dollars a month for that subscription software you see what i'm saying and they can save cost on how much the camera costs and charging people for it who this camera is geared towards because again they already have that in their editing software and like I said, having the time lapse built into the camera, having that cine blog or wherever available on the camera makes more sense than trying to incorporate it from the Sony Alpha 6700, the AI chip into the camera that can give the people the cinematic vlog. You start to see the stuff to unravel the types of content creation that people can use and get out of this camera's performance for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. And even for color grading, I shoot an HLG3 for both, you know, the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I and the Sony ZV-1 Mark I. And what I do is in OBS to be able to do this and not have to sync it up in post, I shoot a HLG3, they're going to the capture cards and in OBS for those capture cards or wherever um, that are brought into OBS, I just apply a LUT from Paul Leeming that was like 30 bucks, you know what I'm saying, for the HLG3 profile. And obviously, you know, he has the he has all of them for all the profiles for the sony cameras and other cameras as well so if i wanted to shoot in a uh, s log or you know cine tone wherever else i still would be covered with those luts i just prefer the look of hlg3 i know it's primarily probably because it's 8-bit or wherever and people will say hlg3 or wherever on the sony zv e10 mark ii would probably not be worth it you're probably better off shooting s log but it's like even if I wanted to do that, I could still just record all of it 4K and everything like that into OBS and be perfectly fine and have those LUTs applied because my lighting and everything is set up. I have a film monitor that has the custom LUTs uh, uploaded as well. So I know that I'm perfectly like exposed or I'm going for the look that I'm getting. I know that's going to be in OBS. I know the, how that's gonna look and everything. The only thing I have to do is EQ the overhead shotgun microphone or whatever microphone I'm using I might have to do a slight EQ because this room is not sound treated. You know what I'm saying? And I can do that freely in DaVinci Resolve with the free plugins that I downloaded or wherever. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what these cameras are made for. That's who these cameras are made for. Like I said, the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, having the built-in time lapse, having that cinematic thing built in or wherever. The only thing I would say with that is that I kind of wish that there was an option to take off the black bars, but keep everything else and keep you know the footage or wherever the same so i don't have to transition from black bars to not having black bars um, i think that would be a little bit better and i would like that a little bit more in my personal opinion but you can still use like i said that cinematic mode and i don't think like i said that's available on the alpha 6700 so that's what i think this camera is for for people who maybe already have the sony zve 10 and they want to upgrade because they want that time lapse built into the camera to you know elevate their content to the next level or they want that cinematic mode to elevate their content to the next level. And, you know, maybe they're getting more in depth of color grading or something like that, or they found the workflow. And like I said, those subtle changes are going to justify them maybe reselling their camera, getting that money back, and then, you know, spending an extra like $300, $400, depending on what they're going to get. And, um, you know, upgrade to the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. My personal opinion, I would just go with getting the camera body paying monthly for the camera or wherever that's what i'm leaning towards doing or wherever and just using the lenses that i have and even if i didn't have any lenses or wherever i would still just get the camera body 
and then like i said go with the yang new lens of the 11 millimeter probably straight off the bat i would just do that obviously go with the alpha 6700 if you're going to be taking more photos and stuff like that and for whatever reason the features in the sony zv e10 mark ii is not going to cover what you need or maybe you're taking a little bit more serious you're working with companies you're probably doing the client stuff or wherever go with the alpha i mean the sony fx30 you know what i'm saying it has a built-in fan you don't have to worry about the overheating which you would have to worry about for the uh, sony alpha 6700 as well as the alpha uh, the sony zve 10 mark ii and one i imagine all of them are going to have those overhead heating issues but what i've done is just get the yuanzi fan or whatever and slap it on the back the upgraded one and this room can get over you know 80 80 degrees fahrenheit you know what I'm saying? So I've had this room get up to 91 before because of the AC wherever in my house, with all these lights and stuff going, my PC having a 3080 in it. I have fans going and wherever to try to cool it off, but I can't leave the door open because, you know, I have a wife and son at home. Son is starting to learn to walk. I'm not trying to get, have them come in here and mess stuff up or wherever. And I can't turn down the AC because they're going to be freezing out there while I'm sitting in a room that's like 70 degrees and they're sitting out there or wherever in the rest of the house and it's like 50 degrees because of the AC disparency. And I can't leave the window open or wherever to dissipate the heat because the sun shines on this side of the room or wherever. So during the day, with it being hotter and hotter and getting worse and worse with storms and all that stuff or wherever, the sun just beats right into this room. So it's just gonna raise the temperature or wherever of the room. And I'm thinking about getting a separate AC unit to go in here to you know compensate for that, to keep it down or wherever. But like I said, with that Yulanzi fan on the back, I've never had it ever since I got the that, that uh, fan or wherever, I've never had this camera overheat. And even if I went outside to record, you know, vlogs or just videos outside to switch it up or whatever, the Sony ZV E10 Mark II, I can do B-roll. I can do cinematic B-roll. I can shoot time lapses outside, you know, stuff like that, all of for under a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just crazy to me. And like I said, I don't need the IBIS. I don't really care about the rolling shutter or whatever. It's never really bothered me on the Sony ZV-1 or the Sony ZV E10 because I'm not doing client work. You know what I'm saying? This is not getting shipped off to a company. Of course, if I was doing that stuff, of course, FX30, maybe the Alpha 6700 or even a more expensive camera than FX30. You know what I'm saying? Of course, if I was doing stuff like that, and that's the approach that a lot of these content creators who cover these cameras are coming from because they do client work. They shoot like gym videos and stuff like that. They shoot advertisement stuff. They're taking on clients, paid work or whatever, whether it be an individual or from a company and everything like that. And they look at the Sony ZV E10 Mark II and they laugh. They're like, just get the FX30 or at bare minimum get the alpha 6700 because it has ibis it has you know the ai tracking and stuff it has the time lapse built in but like i said from my knowledge it doesn't have that cinematic vlog mode you know what i'm saying it's it has the time lapse and everything like that just like the alpha 6700 but that cinematic mode or wherever the upgraded battery you know what i'm saying even if you still have to slap the fan on the back or wherever the capabilities you know what i'm saying the color being from 8-bit to 10-bit, as well as being able to put a little bit more LUTs into the camera. I think this is for people who already have the Sony ZV E10 Mark I. And I do think, contrary to popular belief, what everybody's saying, and people are probably going to say in the comment section, I do believe it's a, enough to upgrade to the Mark II, in my personal opinion. And that's somebody who's been using the Mark I since, like I said, 2022, doing, I would say, relatively good and decent videos or wherever, not the best obviously not you know mind-blowing footage and everything and not being a million you know sub channel or in the hundreds of thousands of subs and views and stuff i still think that this is a decent enough upgrade from the mark one just because like i said the well-roundedness of it for somebody who's doing low level content creation on youtube and stuff entry level content creation on youtube who's not doing a a crazy ton of working with clients and doing stuff off of the platform and stuff like that it's gonna suit you well you know what i'm saying and like i said like there's no knock to all the other people who have done countless videos on the sony zv e10 you know mark ii saying that you're better off getting the other cameras or whatever the more expensive ones like i understand it but like i said they're in a different realm and a different bubble of using cameras and what they do as far as camera work goes than somebody like me. And I think majority of the people who are probably thinking about picking up the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II 
are in my boat and they're going to be deterred from getting the camera that would be perfect for them and they're going to be ending up spending a lot more money because they're going to have to get the camera even if they don't get the uh the lens they're going to have to get lenses you know alpha 6700 or for the fx30 or wherever and if they look at the ca comments people are going to tell them to get those cameras and they're going to get those cameras and they're going to miss out on the capabilities of the mark ii and not realize that they would have a better time with the mark ii and be able to elevate the content creation in the way they wanted to do with the mark ii if they didn't get the alpha 6700 or the fx30 so again do your research know what kind of content you want to make or wherever and like i said if anything get the camera if it doesn't fit you wherever you can obviously return it in a certain window and you know spend a little bit more and maybe get the alpha 6700 you know what i'm saying because maybe you're gonna are gonna take a lot more photos you know what i mean or send it back or wherever save up a little bit more and then get the fx30 for whatever reason if you need that but like i said just getting the the Lonzi fan on the back solves my issues you know what i'm saying putting a camera cage on it slapping it on the back or wherever for the the Lonzi fan solves my issues you know what i'm saying it's just like it's that easy you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. But yeah, that's just my thoughts and opinions. This video has been on long enough. Hopefully it's not 40 minutes to two hours or like my last video that I was going to post, but I realized it was too long. So hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying or wherever. I know there's people going to be arguing with me in the comments and saying that I'm completely wrong because whatever reason, and it's fine. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, in my personal opinion, I would go with the Mark II of the Sony ZV-E10. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. I shouldn't have said that, but I know I'm opening up the floodgates. Um, with that being said, let me know how you like this video. How do you like the audio of this one? I'm changing some stuff up or whatever behind the scenes. So definitely let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. If you're interested in any of the product reviews I have done in the past, um, then you can see the product review playlist popping up on your screen right now. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.